What's up idols, it's CC Lesson 3 welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Well, I just flew in from Florida and boy are my arms tired. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Sorry. I just wanted to make a quick little video, this literally will be probably the shortest video I've uploaded in a very long time, but- <laughs> That is not correct. But it's just something I wanted to say because every now and then I see this comment and I want to be able to just respond to this particular comment with a link to this video. My channel is about Korea. K-pop, Korean travel, Korean dramas, life in Korea as a foreigner, Korean news, Korean law, things like that. We have love stories, marriages and pregnancies, the beginnings of new families, as well as cheating, gaslighting, ghosting, manipulation, fuck boys. We talk about issues and we talk about what worries people. We share advice with each other based on what happened to us. We do vlogs here or there, even though I don't really do them as much because you guys don't seem to be that interested in them anymore. I don't gloss over the bad to make a video overly positive, just like I don't double down on the bad to make a video overtly negative. Life is gray, it's not black and white. So trust me, I truly wish, like in the deep pits of my soul, I truly wish I understood why the positive, happy, wholesome videos don't do as well as the ones that are about more drama and tea and bad things that have happened to people or critical of Korea. If I knew that, I would finally have a video that reached a million views. I would be having steady, steady, consistent views on all my videos. If you go through my channel, you've noticed, or you, hopefully you'll notice that the videos that are like positive and happy, they get fewer clicks and they get fewer views. I don't know why, but it is what it is. As a YouTuber, I'm not interested in making videos you guys don't want to see. Why would I? Would I keep filming my big toe if nobody wants to see my big toe? What? That's a weird analogy, but you get, I hope you get what I'm saying. Since last year, I started to share story times that people have sent to me. You guys say, oh, I want to share my story. Can I email you? And that's what a lot of these story times have been lately. Before that, it was my own story times, my own vlogs in Korea, Korean issues, Korean law, Korean trending drama, things like that some good and some bad things to talk about. But that's the thing, as a YouTuber, you just kind of evolve with what people wanna see. Like I said, back in the day, I used to do hair tutorials. I used to do a lot of skincare videos. I used to do makeup videos. I used to do a lot of vlogging. But these days, you guys aren't interested in that. And that's okay. I am not mad that you guys don't wanna see that. I am interested 100% in giving you guys what you wanna see. So since last year, you guys have been emailing me and we've been sharing those stories on my channel. They're sharing what's happened to them in Korea as a foreigner and some from Japan too, for example. They've been good, they've been bad, they've been scary, they've been funny. I can't control these people's experiences and I can't control what happens to them. Most of the time, these people wanna share their story because they wanna warn you based on what happened to them. They're never saying, hey, you should never go to Korea. They're saying like, if you do, be on the lookout for this. Have fun, but be careful. That's always been the tone of these videos. Never not once has someone said, I hate Korea and I'm never going back and you should never go either. Even if something really bad happens to these people, they always say, just be careful going forward. Don't do this like I did. Don't make the same mistake I did. Or even if they get dumped and cheated on and lied to, they say, well, this next guy will be better. Like it's always a positive tone towards the end because life is about living and learning. So these videos aren't negative, they're just real. <laughs> I have always, always, whenever people ask me, should I go to Korea? What will happen to me in Korea as a black person? What will happen to me in Korea as a gay person? What will happen to me in Korea as an older person? Whatever. I have always said you should go and see for yourself. I have never said, mm, I wouldn't go. I would, I would caution against your travels. I've always said you should go because everyone's experience is different. There's not a single person on this planet <laughs> who can tell me, who can say that I've told them, oh yeah, you shouldn't go to Korea. Cause I've always said you should go. You should see what it's like for yourself. You should experience it for yourself. I always encourage people to travel to Korea. What I think is happening is a lot of people see the title or the thumbnails of these videos and then run to the comments and assume it's negative and complain about the video. There was a comment I saw and I felt seen, like it felt relevant to this. You know, in this day and age, people give their opinion before fully grasping all details of a situation, SMH. Even in the video where I saw this latest comment of why are my videos always so negative, they left that comment on a video that had good and bad in the video. So yeah, the girl starts off telling us about how she was stalked and followed home but she was on a date with a good guy he came to save her and now they're dating still like he was a good guy he ran back to save her and protect her he spent the night with her to make sure he didn't come back and he's even like oh you know guys like him make me worry about my sister like that's a good guy that was a good story i'm thinking they didn't watch the whole video before they left that comment saying why are your videos always so negative it's human nature people respond to drama and tea and sensation the most again as a youtuber i am interested in putting out what you guys want to see 
honestly, what I like to see is there's there are a lot of comments where people say, oh my God, these edits, you're killing me. Oh my God, I'm at work and you got me cackling. You gonna get me in trouble. Or I'm listening to your video with my headphones on and my boyfriend's think I'm over here spazzing out. Like I put a lot of edits in my videos and memes because I'm trying to lighten the mood and I try to make it funny. I want y'all laughing. <laughs> I want y'all entertained, but also informed. So yeah, if you're one of the people that click on the negative videos and then say that that's all I make, that's not true. Literally right before my trip, I was nauseous and not feeling well, but I got an email from a girl who said, I have two wholesome experiences I want to share with you. And the video was called two wholesome foreigner in Korea story times or stories or something like that experiences. And even the thumbnail says like two awesome Korean guys or two great Korean guys. So the way YouTube um, groups your videos, it always likes to show you how videos are performing compared to other videos on your channel. So in my last 10 uploads, that one is at the absolute bottom. And YouTube will often give you a reason why a video is performing a certain way. So yeah, it says 37% fewer viewers. And this is because lower click through rate from regular viewers. That means that even seeing the title and the thumbnail, a lot of you guys aren't interested in clicking on it. And that's fine. It also says that this leads to fewer views from YouTube recommendations, because if the subscribers aren't watching the video, they're not going to recommend it to other people because the algorithm says, oh, that's not a very interesting video. These are the last 10 uploads. And at the very bottom, we have the two wholesome foreigner Korea story time video. And at the very top, we have another alarming trend in Korea. This crime is running rampant. Adding to this comment, the person responded and said, well, isn't there a way you can make your video more engaging or entertaining, like a wholesome video that people actually want to watch? I can't make people want to watch a video. Again, if I did, I'd have Mr. Beast level subscribers and views. Like I can't make you guys want to click or watch a video. I'm a YouTuber, I upload and hope for the best. I can't make you want to click a video or make you interested in a story. So the content honestly doesn't even matter that much. If even by the title and the thumbnail, you're not interested. And even when she sent me the email, she said, Hey, I says, I want to put some positivity on your channel. And I put it out there and you guys don't want to see it again. I am not mad at all about what you guys want to see and what you don't want to see. Being a YouTuber is about evolving with what people want to see. Like there's YouTube trends that come and go. There's YouTube content styles that come and go. Like I said, I used to do hair videos, makeup videos, skincare videos, vlogs. These days I do mostly your story times and that's what you guys want to see. What bothers me is people complaining about it. They're like, why do you put all these negative videos out there? Why are you so interested in making negative content and negatively stereotyping Korea and shitting on Korea? I'm not, that's just what you guys want to see. And that is okay. YouTubers, we perform for you. And again, it's not that I'm not making this content. These people are choosing to not watch that content. Like I said, that last story time, the one that they left this comment on was a good and a bad situation. Like it was a stalker, but she found a really great guy who protected her and got her home safely. And they're still in a relationship. And two uploads ago, I made a video. This girl was on a solo travel trip and she met two great guys in Korea. They hung out. They weren't creepy. They didn't want anything from her. She just made great connections with people in Korea. I don't like comments like that because it, you make it seem like I'm actively trying to portray Korea in a negative light when all I'm doing is talking about facts, Korean news, Korean law, or people's actual experiences that they're telling me about and I'm sharing it with y'all. I'm not grasping and making this up. That I could understand if I was just like, hmm, which shitty thing can I say about Korea today? I have nothing to gain by being mean to Korea or shitting on Korea. I owe a lot to Korea and this type of content. One thing I've noticed about being a YouTuber is a lot of people really feel like they know you because of like online content, like actually know you. They tell me about me all the time. I've, I've, I'm always getting told about myself by the experts on me out there online. <laughs> they tell me what I feel. They tell me how I think. They tell me what my motives are. They tell what my reasons for doing things are. I feel like people who actually know me, if you say, hey, describe Isis in a few words, they would say goofy, silly, ch a big kid. But I am shy as fuck at first. I am very weird and awkward. Like if I don't know you, then I, I, I shut up. But once I'm comfortable around you, that's when my personality comes out. Like I'm not a negative person. When I'm comfortable around you, I don't shut up. I am full of crackhead energy. I've said it before and I'll say it again because I really mean it. It means a lot to me and I think it's a really special thing that so many of you guys feel like we're friends and you feel like you're interested in talking with me through video and in the comments and stuff because most of you guys can do that with like a healthy boundary sort of thing. There's a lot of people I've had the pleasure of meeting because of this channel. A lot of people I've gotten to meet because I do YouTube. Bria, 
I met her at that hip hop pool party in Gangwon though because one of her friends knew my content and she called us over and we all started to hang out and me and Rhea really hit it off. Marika, she said, if you ever come to the UK, I'll hang out with you. I'll show you around. We live together now and she's like my sister. I met a great girl named Thulima and she showed me around Amsterdam. I met a great girl named Kayla and she showed me around Dublin. I met a great girl named Jen and she showed me around Scotland and Edinburgh. K-pop is global. Korean dramas, Korean culture, the entertainment, all of this is global and a lot of us have been able to connect because of that. So I don't understand why people would think that my goal is to be negative about it. What do I gain by that? I have a hard time making friends because I move around so much and because I'm so shy. I've made a lot of great friends and met a lot of great people because of this. I gain nothing from being negative and discouraging people from going to Korea. I have never told anyone to ever, don't ever go. It's awful, you'll hate it. Every time somebody tells me they're about to go, I'm like, oh my God, take pictures, you'll love it. I'm sure you're gonna have a great time. I can't wait to hear back. So yeah, when I see that comment every now and then, I never understand it because again, it's the type of videos that that person complaining chooses to click on because it's a video that they think is negative, but they also chose to click on that video, that negative video based on the thumbnail and the title, you can assume, oh, this is a negative video. So they click, go to the comments, complain, and also, there's good videos on here like we have plenty of love stories on this channel we have plenty of happy endings even though like oh my mother-in-law was racist but i still love her and we're gonna work it out it's difficult being young parents but we're gonna work this out or even though he dumped me and ghosted me i met another great guy and it's working out like <laughs> so yeah i wanted to make this video so whenever i see that comment i can just respond with a link to this video because i'm i'm sick of kind of saying oh i don't make negative videos you just only want to click on the negative ones and that's just human nature people it's easier for people to be like "Ooh, spill the tea so all i'll say is watch the full video before you want to decide if it's negative because even if something really bad happens to a person they usually have a pretty good outlook on it or they want to say hey don't do what i did this was fucked up this is how you can prevent it from happening to you that sort of thing everybody wants to share their story share their experience share their advice and i am very grateful that people keep sending this in because not only do they take the time to write this out but they've been sending links to their instagram and pictures and videos and stuff as like proof to go with the story like they're collecting evidence for a study or something and i really appreciate that because you guys like these stories and they are very fun to tell so anyway i'm rambling <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching if you did especially if you truly understand me and my goal and my message here. I want people to want to go to Korea, but I don't want them to expect this opar delusion of, oh, I'm going to meet my prince, my handsome prince. Like, yes, some are like that. And yes, some are not. That's my goal. So thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Annyeong.